Hey everybody, so it feels like it's been forever since I did a Facebook Live in my car, but here I am in my car doing Facebook Live, and today what I'm going to be talking about is how we assume that people know things like professionals, that they know something that they may not know. I just left the bank, and I was telling the bank teller that I use their money to buy properties and then I refinance the property using their money again. So the example that I used was, I said to the teller, I use unsecured lines of credit from your bank to buy my properties. I use the money to buy the properties and then fix the properties. And then when the properties are all done, I will come back and refinance the property with your bank and then pay back the line of credit that you lent me back there. And I'm like, these are your products at the bank you work at. And this is how I do real estate with no money out of my own pocket. And her face was just like, I need to learn. And I said, absolutely, and I'm glad that you said that because I have a school that I'm teaching at today at, thir uh, at seven o'clock Thursdays in Langhorn. She said, I live near Langhorn. I said, great, come on down. So there's a beautiful example of where there are opportunities all around you even at the place that you work at that you may miss out on because you don't have that mentor to show you how to leverage the, the opportunities that are right there. Again, she's a professional and she's really good at what she does, but she's not yet a real estate investor and so she doesn't understand how to use the products and tools that she has right there at her arsenal, right? And I, I keep going back and I say, I'm using your products to do my business and you guys allow me to do this all for free. And I said, you can verify, because she's in my account, I'm like, and you can verify all of the money that I'm telling you about. And yeah, there it is, it's all right there. And so that's why it's like, oh, really? This is real? I'm like, ta-da. And I have these conversations with a lot of different people. Uh, most recently, I had a conversation where a person was trying to get money from a credit card. And the person, who was filling out the application uh, on behalf of the person who's trying to get the credit card. Like th this person also worked at a bank. It was a different bank and my friend was trying to get a credit card. The bank teller had no idea about the, the, the balance transfers versus the uh, cash advance versus this and that and how to all do all of those things. And I'm on the phone with my friend as he's sitting with the bank teller and I'm explaining to the bank teller how their product works so that my friend could get uh, low interest money, low interest money from the bank, getting a new credit card so that he can buy real estate. And then what happens when you buy real estate? If done right, if you have an asset that produces money, right, you are now taking free money to make you money. It's a really cool thing. It's it's slightly more work than what's called arbitrage. Arbitrage is a whole nother thing. Feel free to look that up. But it's kind of like arbitrage where you're just taking money and you're putting it somewhere and that's making you money. So I like the idea of not having money secured in a property using other people's money because you have a skill set that you can apply because the bank makes money from lending money. That's the business model that they have. But uh, they may not know how to invest money. So your job is to borrow the money and then use that money so that they can uh, so that they can get their interest and so that you can build your you can build your, your business. It's a cool thing and it's it's funny how people don't know all that there is to know about this stuff. It's like it's all right there and everybody's interested. It's just the um, the, the strategies, the details, people people just don't don't know them. I was at Home Depot today, and I talked to the girl who was at the um, the, the customer service. I was returning, I was returning some some materials, and I said, you know, I always have this conversation. How do you like your job? And blah blah blah. And she's like, oh well, it's okay. I was like, you any you interested in real estate investing at all? And she said, yeah. I am interested. I had this plan where I wanted to buy six or seven properties and collect the rent from that and I'd be good. But it just takes too long and and like I'm still working on one. I said, what do you mean you're still working on one? 
uh, you actually got off your fat ass today. Um, no, Mike. <laughs> I'm still on it. I'm still sitting on it. So I'm talking to her and she says that it's just taking too long. And I said, what do you mean by that it's taking too long? She said, I've been trying to fix it for the last two years now. I said, wait, who's doing the work? I said, who's doing the work? And she said that, uh, she said, oh, we are like her and her husband or something like that. I was like, well, that's your problem. You said you wanted to be a real estate investor, but it sounds to me like you were trying to be a contractor. It's a very big difference. Just because you're a contractor doesn't mean you're a real estate investor. And if you are trying to focus on being a real estate investor, focus on that part, which means finding the product or finding the property and finding the money and putting those things together. So that is what it means to be a real estate investor. And I'm like, you can only swing one hammer at a time. And between you and your husband, maybe you can both swing hammers. But when I have a property going, I got like eight people in the house. And they're seasoned professional who's, who do this day in and day out. You just can't compete. Don't stop doing the work at the property. That's your problem. It's not that real estate doesn't work, it's just that you're doing it wrong. Right, real estate investing works. It's been proven over and over and over. And just because you think you're doing it right, it doesn't mean it is. If you don't have anybody coaching you, if you don't have anybody showing you the right way, then yeah, you're gonna hate it and think it doesn't work. So what she, what did she end up doing? She just, she went back to work. She, you know, she stayed at her job at Home Depot. And I said to her, well, if you never get those six or seven properties, you're just going to end up working at Home Depot for the rest of your life or another job, whether it's Home, Home Depot or not. You're just gonna end up working at whatever job. Man, I hate when that happens. I got a phone call in the middle of my Facebook Live, but all good. So I told her, if you don't have any assets, you're gonna have to work for the rest of your life because assets put money in your pocket without you working. An asset is, is, is something that creates money for you passively. If you don't have anything creating you passive income, then you are gonna end up working for the rest of your life. That's just how it is. You're gonna work until the age of 65 when other passive income vehicles kick in, such as pensions, social security, or 401ks. You can't really touch those or you shouldn't touch those things until those those eight the age of 65 or 59 and a half or whatever because then uh, you can avoid the penalty see you even get penalized with the traditional methods if you touch your own money you get penalized if you have a property you get paid now and you can borrow against the equity or you can sell the asset like you can touch your own money all you want with no penalties the beautiful thing the other thing is with the rental income the rental income that I get is typically tax-free because of depreciation so if you have a property you get to write off depreciation which is a phantom loss meaning that you didn't actually pay that pay the expense but you get to write it off against your income so a lot of times the income is completely tax-free so if your income is tax-free and then and you can touch the money why would you ever invest in your 401k or any vehicle like that? Your 401k, you touch the money early, you get penalized. When you take your withdrawals, you get penalized or you get taxed. It doesn't sound like a good vehicle to me. But if you don't have the financial intelligence to understand what I just said, then that means that you're going to be paying more in life all throughout your life. It's a big deal. It's a really big deal. So your job, get financially educated, have higher financial intelligence, and then you can get you can work less and keep more or not work at all and keep all that you make it's a really cool thing but you know that comes with time it doesn't come easy you have to you have to invest the time into yourself into learning the skills and you do that enough you don't have to work ever ever again it's really cool so that's that professionals may not know what it is that it is that you want to do you got to know what you want to do and then leverage them for the services that they offer so that's that hopefully I see you guys tonight Thursday 920 Town Center Drive in Langhorne PA the uh, suite number is I 15 yeah I 15 right 920 Town Center Drive 7 p.m. see you tonight meetings like this change people's lives it's awesome. So hopefully I get to see you there and we can we can talk shop. All right guys. Peace.